if you have followed the channel for a little while, you'll know that when it comes to carving difficulties, the best approach, of course, is to avoid them altogether. That's through nutrition, that's through genetics, and of course, through good husbandry. However, even the easiest carving herd will occasionally need to assist. This technical is my attempt to distill out some of the guidance on how you know when you need to intervene. This is definitely not an exact science, and the following is a guide not gospel, intended for perhaps vet students or anyone inexperienced when it comes to carving cattle. I don't know about anyone else, but certainly when I graduated, I had yet to carve a cow myself unassisted. And of course, it's a very common question from cattle keepers. When should I go in? When should I call the vet? This technical is built on some more comprehensive guides, the aim being to build a base from which you can then build on with experience. If you're consulting this video in the middle of a carving, get off YouTube and ring your vet. So with that initial caveat out of the way, it's worth understanding why it's important to know when to intervene. Why you shouldn't leave it too late is probably more obvious. The longer a calf is in distress, the longer a cow's in distress, the less likely you are to get a good outcome. And by that, I mean a live calf and a live cow. But there are also risks to intervening too early. A carving is naturally quite a long process. Compare that to an assisted carving where often we extract the calf in a matter of minutes. By going in too early, we risk unnecessary pain and damage to both cow and calf. And because we're contaminating that cow's reproductive tract, her chances of rebreeding successfully at the next mating period are lower. So what are some general scenarios where you may want to intervene? Number one, if the calf is presented incorrectly. A calf, just like a lamb, should come out like a diver. Two front feet closely followed by the head. If you see a back foot or back feet, if you see just a head, or if you see a head and one foot, then the chances are that cow may need assistance. Number two, if the calf's head or tongue are swollen, that is a bit like a hung lamb where they've been in the pelvic inlet for too long and that head or tongue is starting to swell. Number three, if there has been no progress two hours after the appearance of the water bag. This is also known as the two hours, two feet rule. Number four, if the cow has been visibly straining for 30 minutes without making any progress. Number five, if the cow has stopped trying for 20 minutes or more after a period of progress. Number six, if the cow has been in first stage labor, and by first stage labor, I mean before the appearance of the water bag, before obvious straining, but in that slightly vague period where the cow is uncomfortable, perhaps separated from the rest, and maybe nest making for over eight hours. And number seven, if there are signs of excessive fatigue or excessive bleeding in the cow, and I will add a number eight. Once you have some experience, there's nothing wrong with investigating if something just feels off. Now, unless you are extremely diligent or you have some sort of CCTV system which records what the cows are doing, the chances are you're not going to know when first stage labor started and you're not going to know when the water bag appeared and you're not going to know exactly when a cow started straining visibly. Plus, real life comes into play. You may need to disappear somewhere to do something else. It might be the middle of the night and you need to go to bed. It it might be that you've had a problematic calving with a run of big calves that have needed assistance and you're a little anxious about the calves that are yet to come. All of these perfectly reasonable factors feed into a relative readiness or a relative reluctance to assist in a calving. I get that. Like I said, this is just a scaffold, a skeleton for the inexperienced to build on with experience. And if you go between farms, what you'll see is different farmers have different tolerances. Some give cattle plenty plenty of time and rarely assist, others rush in virtually as soon as they see a water bag. As you go on and get experience, you almost subconsciously will start to take on what is normal and by extension, what's abnormal and might require assistance. If there's one of those scenarios that seems to catch even experienced people out, it tends to be that first stage labor for over eight hours. Because there's no water bag, people don't panic, and that stage is generally pretty vague. People don't want to go in and upset them, and that's perfectly reasonable. It tends to be twins, 
torsions and true breaches that catch people out. There's often never a foot that appears or even a water bag. But on the flip side, if we went and investigated each of these cows, how many would be unnecessarily assisted? That's very hard to say. There is definitely an art to this. That is what we are here for. Of course, if you have an urgent question, ring your vet. Otherwise, if you'd like to learn a bit more, I have attached in the video description a couple of more comprehensive guides to carving the cow. I found these very useful as a student and even as a graduated vet. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, don't be afraid to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it for updates on new videos. Give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Other than that, I will see you for the next video.